thank you to team hello my yoga for this opportunity to share some uh, knowledge with all the viewers today we all know that uh, diabetes is a pandemic by itself it has always been there for many many years now and people are struggling people are doing whatever they can so this is our little small endeavor where we can help the community the society at large uh, how to uh, treat diabetes the non pharmacological way okay that is in a holistic way so coming to a little bit about myself i'll introduce myself i'm a holistic health coach i'm a nutrition coach i'm a yoga therapist i'm also an acupuncturist i have been treating people with lifestyle disorders like diabetes dyslipidemia that is high cholesterol um uh, pain chronic pain acute pain spinal issues musculoskeletal issues and so on and so forth so we have a, a cute little clinic in chennai it's called orange ray and uh, what is spe special about orange ray what is special about orange ray is we've tried to bring in all the holistic sciences under one roof so in orange ray we have ayurveda we have homeopathy we have naturopathy we have yoga therapy we have acupuncture and we have psychotherapy uh when i started orange ray the reason behind starting orange ray was my belief that disease is not just in your body it comes we are a, we are a multi dimensional beings so we have a mind we have a spirit we have a heart and we can contract disease from any of these koshas hmm? and it shows on the body after a point so if you have to treat those disease we need to address it at all these levels so no one science is a solution so we need to combine sciences for the best results it's not always we have to combine but yes we are there are times when we need to combine all these sciences because the idea is not to find out whether which science is better or who is more important whether the homeopath is more important or the allopath is more important the idea is to treat the patient so we need so this is what is modern science advocating and this is called integrative healthcare we integrate okay uh, for the end benefit of the consumer that is the patient so that is our usp in orange ray so we've tried to bring all the holistic sciences under one roof so that the patient doesn't have to run helter skelter ki yahan jao phir udhar jao phir ye doctor ke paas jao sab kuch ek hi jagah is like a supermarket hmm? of health so that's what we do and i think i have answered your question sorry sorry for this yeah i've answered your question shivani hello can you can people hear me yes, or yes yes we can hear you yeah. it took me a while to unmute myself <laughs> no problem no problem yeah uh farzana it's wonderful to know that how orange ray is taking one after the another initiatives integrating different sciences um ancient science of india or worldwide approaches to heal people in a holistic way which is really really nice thank you so much before i start this program um we have made it in a different format this program is is not just where you will be talking here today through our conversation i would like to address a lot of questions so uh, we took a community and we have sent them a lot of questions what they feel about diabetes and in return they have sent us another set of questions what questions they undergo what doubts they have undergo so we'll be asking you all those questions so that we have a better understanding of how diabetes can be treated i'm so uh, i'm so sorry prasanna if you are not prepared for any questions just take your time and no 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 worries <laughs> i know my subject thank you so much yeah so uh, prasanna we tend to hear a lot of people saying hamari sugar borderline par hai you know uh, we go for annual blood checkups and we see you know uh, what is a where our sugar lies and they say hamari sugar borderline par hai what does that exactly mean and I how much care people. do care do these people have to take care of okay so i'm so glad you started with this because this is a phrase i hear every time okay so whenever you ask a patient aapki sugar kya hai hamari borderline pe hai so for for me first of all it's an escape escape statement they don't want to face this they don't know the truth they don't want to know the truth and they somebody has said don't worry aapka sugar to borderline pe hai so they are very happy to sit on that borderline and feel that everything is good this is the gray area this is the area of ignorance 
This is the area of not wanting to take action. And this is an area of escapism. Okay, this is the psychological aspect. Now, I'll, when, when I'll tell you what is uh, the sugar about. So before we actually get diabetes, most of the people they are into a stage called pre-diabetes and they don't even know about it. Very few people are aware, people who do regular health checks or people who are very aware about their body symptoms and stuff like that. They come to know that, yes, I need to go in for a blood test and they find out that they are in pre-diabetes. So what happens in pre-diabetes? Pre-diabetes is the area where your blood sugar levels are normal than usual, but they are not in the area where it can be called diabetes. So if you go to see below 100, okay, that is um, MG by DL, is supposed to be a normal fasting blood sugar. If it goes between 100 to 125, it is the pre-diabetes area. And above 125, obviously, it is diabetes. Coming to HbA1c, which is a three-month average, I'm telling you in both the things so that viewers who don't know this will at least understand this. Uh, 5.6 is supposed to be in the normal HbA1c for non-diabetics who are normal healthy people. Till 6.4, it's considered as pre-diabetic. And after that, it is a full-blown diabetes. Now, how does one know physically that I could be having something wrong with me? Feeling tired more than normal, okay? Uh, blurry vision, where you feel that, you know, suddenly, but suddenly, that is one clue. Urinating or peeing too often. Another clue. Feeling weakness, feeling tingling in your fingers, in your feet. This could also be a sign. And losing weight without doing too much to lose weight. These are all signs one should be very aware of. If you feel you're having any one of this or more than one of this, a simple blood sugar test can do wonders and tell you where you are going. So when you people say that borderline, pe hai, so actually I don't know what they mean, very honestly, because as I said, it is an escapist answer. It could be borderline of diabetes, it could be borderline of pre-diabetes, or it is something which their medical uh, doctor or whoever they're, uh, uh, they are going to has told, you figure what you are on the borderline. Pe ho. So they have like, okay, we don't need to figure out what we are on the borderline. We are on the borderline. If there is a borderline, then we borderline. We have a tablet, we have insulin, leke hai, without all these, what is it? Hai? It's a gray area. So I'm sure that we should uh, make sure that we should always be below 100 in G slash DL. Definitely, yes. And if you're going above 100, immediately take measures so that you never become a diabetic. Yes. That's a warning sign. See, nature also, uh, Shivani, is kind, kind to us. It never gives us disease just overnight. It always gives us warning bells. But we humans, we never hear those warnings. No, those we warnings. Hear, we just brush it under the carpet. So that's it. But if we start feeding that, and if you're aware, so it all boils down to awareness and self-love. How much you're interested in your own health. Agree, agree. Uh, Farzana, I have uh, one more question since we are doing this program on healthy aging. But a um, lot of people with the age, they tend to get type 2 diabetes. Why is that so? Yeah. So there is a term in uh, medical language, we call it chaos. C-H-A-O-S. C stands for cardiovascular disease, that is heart disease. H is for hypertension. A is for adult onset diabetes. Uh, o is for obesity and S is for stroke. Now, what is chaos? Chaos is a one big family by itself. So as you get older, somebody will have a tendency in one of these areas. You may get overweight or you may start having heart issues because of your diet or you may have high triglyceride levels or a lot of cholesterol or maybe because of stress. Something to kuch na kuch kisi ko sabko hota unless you have led a really very, very good lifestyle. So since chaos is a network or a family by itself, if you end up getting any one of this, it quietly invites all the rest of the people and says, come, 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 we are having a feast. The host where we are going to be is not bothered about their health. Come on, let's all party here. So that's what happens. So that is why we see that as we grow older, the tendency for diabetes increases because the tendency for any metab metabolic syndrome increases. And metabolic syndrome is all of this put together. 
Agreed. Yes, yes, I have seen because if the person is suffering from one one thing, I tend to hear that in few days they are suffering from other two or three. Yes, so, yeah, that's unfortunate. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All our bodies, bodily systems are together aligned. See, we today have super specialists who say, okay, heart ka doctor hai, lungs ka doctor hai, kidney ka doctor hai. But at the end of the day, if one of the major organs is not working properly, it will drag down the other ones too. So that is the basic essence of life. Agreed. Moving ahead, we have talked a lot about... Uh, you know the problem areas let's let's talk about we got a lot of reply from a lot of people that they used to say that you know we had diabetes as high as 200 mg slash dl but now they are normal they don't have diabetes anymore can diabetes be really reversed okay now this word reverse is a good term but a strong term okay so medically speaking Reverse is something when you can say for sure that I had something, I don't have it, and I will never ever get it. That is called reverse. But we would like to use the term remission. What is remission? Remission is I had diabetes and I don't have diabetes now. We can only talk about now. We can't talk about the future unless we are so sure that we are going to do everything properly. So that when you say my diabetes is remission is, abhi mere ko diabetes nahi hai. I don't have diabetes now. I don't know about tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow, whether I'm going to adhere to my diet, whether I'm going to get some other complication, whether I'm not going to exercise, whether my stress is going to increase like crazy, who knows that? No one knows that. So no one can say that diabetes has been reversed. It's a strong term. We use a medically correct term saying that diabetes is in remission. So here and you are talking about possible. Yes, and it is possible, very much possible. We've done it with so many patients. All it requires is discipline. And first, first step, self-love. I'm interested in getting better. I am going to do whatever it takes for me to get better. That is the first step. Second is discipline and consistency to do the same thing day in and day out. And third is going the right knowledge, what you have to do, going to a person who knows he or she what they are doing. So that's what is important. Yeah, it can be. I think, I think Farzana, I would like to add one more point to this. That's trust. Of course, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. So before trust, nothing comes. Nothing sure. comes into it. Trust but in you yourself have... and trust in your coach. Yes, trust on your coach. Any doubt, that room of doubt will be a chaos, another chaos. So uh, <laughs> I have another question adding to this. Here you are saying diabetes is reversible. Are you talking about only type 2 diabetes? Yes, because type 1 is a genetic condition. In, uh, in type 1 diabetes, basically your uh, pancreas is almost either not producing any insulin or almost none. So that can only be managed. It cannot be uh, put into remission. No, not yet, at least. Mm. So, uh, fine. So only type 2 we can, we are talking about type 2, that is the adult onset. See, for a long period of time, type 1 diabetes was called juvenile diabetes. But now it is seen that even adults are getting it. Um, there can be 101 reasons, okay? But uh, when we talk about type 2 diabetes, that is also one of the conditions, the reasons for type 2 diabetes is also your genetic history. That means what genes you are carrying, we don't know. Your family history and, of course, all the other stuff which I said, your chaos, right? So that, those are the con uh, reasons for type 2. So if we can alter those things, if we can change those things, if we can work on our lifestyle, then we have a good chance to put type 2 diabetes into remission. So the first thing is we look for remission. The second thing, what we aim to do, if not remission, at least lower, uh, uh, remove my medication, okay? At least remove my insulin. If not insulin, at least remove my medication. If not medication, let me at least lower my medication. So for different people, the expectations are different depending on how long they have been on medicines, number one, depending on their family history, depending on the comorbidities, which I already told you about, how much of abdominal fat they have, what kind of uh, heart disease they are having, stress levels, lifestyle, so on and so forth. So, Fazana, can you share that how at Orange Ray or what is your approach when any person comes with diabetic uh, condition? Okay. So first of all, when someone comes with diabetes, the first thing is we 
put them and make them undergo certain tests to see what are their values like because patients are never sure. Then we do an evaluation to find out their medical history, whether they've had any incidents of heart history, they've, uh, any, any surgeries, heart surgeries they've done. And then we uh, see their weight, we see their um, uh, 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 the fat content in their body, we measure their abdominal girth, we find out their mental status, how stressed they are, what kind of lifestyle they're leading. So everything we take into account, okay? Based on that, all the information, what we have collected, we slowly start their program, okay? So when, so basically what all we need to do, we need to set up a exercise schedule for them, but it's very easily said exercise schedule. Obviously it has to be done in a very slow and progressive manner so that people are able to exercise what we are seeing. We have to look at correct diet, diet, which is nutrient dense, which is uh, depending again on their, see there are thin people also who are diabetic, okay? So we have to see how it is. We can't give the same diet to everyone. So we uh, make a diet chart for them. We ask, we teach them how to monitor monitor their sugar levels, how often they should monitor, what do they feel. We encourage them to make a log book, okay? Because just remembering your sugar is no good. You always have to have it. So you will know, okay, what I've eaten, which has triggered. So there could be something called low sugar, which is hypoglycemia. So that also we need to check. So we basically exercise, diet, uh, stress reduction through certain therapies, and we also use acupuncture on them. Acupuncture is an ancient science, uh, Chinese uh, system, which basically um, rearranges the energy in your body through the energy meridians, right? And it also activates certain organs because every organ, you would, everybody now by now knows that we have certain points in the body which correlate to certain organs. So when we activate those uh, um, points and we can actually make those organs work better, so we use all this combination for diabetes and we've had some amazing results that I must share with you for sure. So, yeah, so that's the uh, what we do. So with your confidence, I feel like, yes, you have those results. Uh, but tell me one thing, uh, does your patients who were taking insulin, like, do they have to take it forever or uh, after this entire procedure or they had quit, like? No, not necessarily. Uh, no. So again, you don't need to take, once if they started insulin, the, our, first, our first thing is to wean them off insulin and put them on meds, right? That's our first uh, um, uh, endeavor. The second is to reduce their meds. The third is to completely take off the meds. So as long as they are with us and they're doing what we are saying, we see a very beautiful, constant progress. But as I said, there is no there is no magical solution. I got rid of my insulin and I'm only on meds now. Or, and then I will always be like that. No, if you go back to your old lifestyle where you are eating junk, where you have a lot of stress, you don't have any daily routine for your self-care, you will someday you may go back to insulin. So there's no, there's nothing written in stone. It's a constant effort required from the patient's side. That's why I said consistency and discipline. But Fazana, after this conversation, I'm thinking if remission is possible, then why not everyone is doing it? As I said, what the first thing, that consistency and discipline. Tell me, kitne log gym jate hain? Everyone knows exercise is good for them. Tell me how many people go to the gym. Even if they go, they go there and they talk and come back, right? So that is the most difficult thing, point number one. Point number two, they go to doctors and diabetologists who are very good in their work, but basically they have been trained to treat diabetes through medicine. And that's what they will give you. They have not been trained to tell you that, you know what, you sit, uh, come sit with me. I'm going to explain to you for 45 minutes. Maximum, I've seen doctors will tell you, please, ek hanta, walking career rose, healthy khana khaiye, hamara ek nutritionist hai, jaiye uske paas, go. Please get a diet for yourself. That will be a standard diet given to everyone. Tuck, 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 tuck. Repeat, copy, paste. Okay. And that's it. What about stress? Nobody's handled it. Okay. What kind of exercise they are doing? Well, just walking is not enough. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is nobody because, and again, the big boss of all, the pharma industry, okay, if they don't take medicines, who will buy them, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a big cycle, a big thing out there. I mean, without, uh, uh, you know, naming anything, it, this is the reason. And as I said, this is the easy way out. To pop a pill is very easy where you don't have to do anything. Just go to my doctor. My sugar levels have increased. 
okay take this cocktail yesterday i gave you this three combination today i'm going to give you something else all i have to do is go to the pharmacy give the prescription pay money and done i have nothing else on my head i can continue to abuse my body i can continue to live my life the way i want without any onus on myself so that's very easy isn't it to live like this but if i say no mere ko roz exercise karna hai barabar se khana khana hai i have patients some patients come and tell me you know what my wife will not cook what you are saying now what do i answer for that tell me hmm? so i have only two answers either you will start learning how to cook or be, bring your wife for a counseling session that all <laughs> that's all i can say you know so we have all kinds of problems people come up with those who don't want to do but then let me tell you then there are the very good ones also the very aware ones who realize that today my health is in this position because of myself i am solely responsible for my health and they decide that i don't want to live in my old age all the time suffering because in youth when you suffer somehow you manage but in old age when you suffer it's difficult you know it's difficult nobody is interested in seniors seniors have to be interested in themselves so that is what i feel so yes so there are two sides to the coin fazana fazana in this all this conversation you have laid a lot of emphasis on stress so how orange ray helps its patients to deal with stress okay so uh, stress is um, of many kinds okay you can have a physical stress you can have a emotional stress you can have stress re- from financial reasons you can have stress where you feel unloved i'm stressing on this word unloved here because this program is mainly for seniors and seniors today are feeling more than ever unloved uncared for ignored okay log sochte hain abhi inka kya value hai ho gaya unka koi kaam nahi hai okay but that's where i want to say it's absolutely a wrong way to think seniors come with abundance of experience and experience comes with a lot of doing things wrong and doing things right so they are a storehouse so we one should never think that seniors are useless and seniors should themselves not think that they are useless number one so when stress happens so the biggest cause for stress in seniors is this feeling feeling where they they feel that i am no longer a contributive factor to myself my family and society at large so that self worth needs to come in seniors number one okay and that is the biggest cause second cause could be financial we don't know how stable they are financially whether they have provided themselves well for their you know golden years or whether they are dependent on children whoever so these are the reasons for stress so once when they come to us we start a, a very soft counseling process wherein we make them realize their own self worth we make them realize that what they can do it's not that the it's over it's they somewhere think that my life is over it's abhi khatam sab kuch so we make them realize this is not over this is the beginning okay so we we bring that and that slowly reduces the stress that that changes the perspective in life you know what they think about themselves and a new confident person emerges okay who knows i can do it myself so that is what we do so we look at a transformation diabetes is not just that oh you don't have enough insulin and your uh, body is having sugar that's not the the way we look at diabetes it's a it's a 360 degree perspective and that's how we handle it that's wonderful that's wonderful farzana and i believe okay. we need that integrated system to deal uh, all our problems all our problems thank you uh, last question for this conversation is um, all diabetic parents are worried about if i have type 2 diabetes what are the chances my children are also at risk okay so just the way we say that uh, you know what there's ah, one more thing i wanted to could you brought this question so i will tell you in the reverse way so i have some patients who will confidently blame it on their genes nahi nahi meri mummy ko diabetes tha i will also get that my father had diabetes i will also get that so let me tell you your genetic makeup is actually about 7 to 9% i'm not sure of the exact percentage but it's around that much okay so we say in holistic wellness that your genes are like carrying a loaded gun a gun which has got bullets in it now just by carrying a loaded gun you're not going to die you will only die when someone pulls the trigger and who is going to pull the trigger here your lifestyle so if you can correct your lifestyle even if you are carrying genes which is has diabetes in it your family history 
you can still get out of it because that is the power of your lifestyle, your thought process. Now, coming back to so the same thing, if you have diabetes, your children may be susceptible to it. But as I said, it's a loaded gun. They don't, they don't shoot themselves. It, they can easily correct their lifestyle and they can easily bypass this. Okay, so we don't have to doom, doom ourselves and doom them saying that chalo abhi to kuch nahi ho sakta. Nahi, 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 aise nahi hai. Sab kuch ho sakta. So that's the way it is. Very nice, very nice, uh, Fazal. And uh, yes, I agree with that, that lifestyle has a lot of uh, role in playing this, you know, in moderating this entire thing. Uh, now we are open for the questions from the audience. So I would request my dear audience, to unmute yourself and please ask if, uh, if you have any more questions with Farzana. Okay, so I think we have a nutritionist here, Zainab, who also understands my woes. Okay. Yeah, Zainab. Yes, Zainab, you can uh, unmute yourself and please ask the question. Okay, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, yes I can, Zena. Go ahead. Hi, 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 ma'am. A uh, very warm welcome. It was so good to hear you. Uh, and I couldn't just, uh, you know, uh, get my head off from your words because each and every word made so much difference. Uh, like I got to know so many new things that how to make people understand. Uh, in upcoming few days, I'm going to do a, a speech in a very big place and I was very worried how to make them understand about uh, diabetes, uh, DNA thing. And uh, now I got to know a very good sentence and a very, very good uh, story to explain to them. Thank you so much. Um, That's really sweet, Zena. Thank you. Yeah. So even uh, you talked about that you are uh, having a holistic kind of house, that uh, you, you, you have a holistic clinic. So the same thing that I have, but I don't have just one, one difference is there that I... I treat people with acupressure and not acupuncture, right? So even it is very tough for me nowadays to make them understand what is acupressure or what is acupuncture. So what is your journey? I would just like to know in just one sentence or two that how you make people understand about this new criteria because it's not an old traditional thing in India, right? About acupuncture. So how you make people understand that, okay, diet to hai, but along with that and yoga, even I'm a yoga therapist, so I can understand your, uh, your way. But uh, acupuncture is something very different to make them understand. How do you do that? Okay, so um, uh, Zainab, uh, basically, uh, I, one thing I will not uh, agree with you is saying that this is a new thing. No, we have had marma from the centuries, okay, which is an offshoot of Ayurveda and yoga so and Siddha. So marma points are there in the body. So, but only thing is we have forgotten our ancient wisdom. So it's not a new thing, number one. But people have forgotten, so we need to reintroduce it to them, okay? Just like how people forget how to do simple things and we have to teach them again. So that requires, again, we need the support of Hello My Yoga to create this awareness, okay? Where it reaches out to people and say that, yes, the, uh, acupressure, acupuncture can be useful. Now, coming to the difference between acupressure and acupuncture, both are using the points. Only thing is acupressure presses on those points. Acupuncture uses a needle. Now, the reason I use acupuncture more is, again, a little only it is more strategic. And the simple reason is when you keep on pressing, people get a lot of pain and nobody wants to bear pain. So they run off after two days. OK, or they end up with these big sores on the body, you know, those blue, purple color marks, OK, blood clots. And they feel, what is this? You know, people, people, whether they are good inside or not, they are not bothered. The body has to look very nice and chamka, chamkila. So when they see that, they run away. But with acupuncture, their pain is very less. It's just one pinch. And it's done. They, they don't feel anything. But they start seeing the result. They start feeling the energy levels have changed. Their mindset is changing from a hopeless mind to getting hopeful because the energy is changing inside them. So once they do acupuncture, in three sittings itself, they will know the difference. 
and because they have not suffered during the process they are more open to it so i would suggest to you that either you know get the thing and start doing acupuncture if you are feeling a uh, very difficult uh, a lot of difficulty using acupressure because that is actually difficult for you as well because you have to exert so much of you know strength and uh, and the patient also undergoes so much of pain so avoid it wonderful zainab i hope you have been answered great so we have another question uh from vasundra shah is regular medication for diabetes mandatory or it can be simply treated with proper diet and exercise and her second question is how to tackle hypoglycemia in patients of diabetes okay so first part is uh, it's not such a simple answer which i can give you yes or no so yes we suppose let's say we take a person who has just been diagnosed with diabetes so the first thing is what why did diabetes come erratic lifestyle how can you solve it make your lifestyle proper so that should be your first step not taking the medicine because you've just been diagnosed okay let's find out if you can correct your lifestyle correct do all what i told you in the earlier talk and then if your sugar levels are your diabetes is going into remission if that happens obviously there's no need of taking a medicine now if you have been already taking medicine from a very long time we don't just ask you to stop it abruptly no we don't work non scientifically like this we start first correcting things which i said your lifestyle and all of the other things and when your sugar starts dropping we start adjusting your medication according to your new insulin levels so we slowly slowly reduce your medication to a point where it can be completely stopped or if you are on insulin from insulin stop karke we put you on medicine so it's a process there is no one answer it all changes with different people so what i am trying to tell you please do not abruptly stop your diabetes medication point number 1 go to somebody who knows their stuff okay and don't believe anyone who says no no just stop your medicine i will make you fine don't do that that's not the correct approach okay that's not that's absolute quackery please don't do that so slowly first regulate regulate your diet regulate your lifestyle get address your stress do whatever your uh, coach is telling you and then slowly when you see the results that yes your sugar is dropping then obviously you can change your medication that is fine now coming to how to deal with hypoglycemia so what happens that uh, sometimes when uh, there are some people who respond so beautifully to lifestyle changes that we see that you know they are feeling so much better and the sugar is really going down so we have to be very vigilant that is the reason we need to have this log book so that we know ki kab mera sugar why my sugar is going low what happened what did i eat so again your dietitian whoever is giving you the diet chart has to be very alert to see okay to adjust the food adjust your medication and things like that okay so that you don't be in a very low sugar place so everything has to be monitored and done closely so that is what how that's how we address i hope you got your answer i hope asundra ji you have got your answer can we have a thumbs up or an answer yes from me thank you so much uh i could see dolaji uh, you have unmute yourself do you have any questions oh i have just typed out one wanted to know if uh, wheat and rice could be had together in a meal no wheat and rice not in a meal together please you have them separately if you must and of course when we make you go through a diet plan uh, we try to see whether you are you know uh, gluten uh, uh, sensitive or what it is so we slowly slowly change you to other grains if you can please use all our all we have india is a land rich of millets okay bajra hai jowar hai uh, rajgira hai you know and uh, you can have all of this and you can have something called buckwheat buckwheat is not wheat it's what just what is it, buckwheat it's not wheat it's a form of a uh, millet it's a grain please go to any store which keeps uh, your dhaniyams or any stores which keeps these uh, uh, natural uh, stuff millets and stuff you will get it buckwheat se roti banaiye make roti out of that it's very good for diabetics so all those things you can do but don't have wheat and rice in the same meal for sure thank you My thank question. you dolachi uh, we have one more question from zena zena please unmute yourself 
okay so there is one another topic uh, related to diabetes which is happening related with the food right which is milk uh, the milk that we are having right now is we all know how uh, it is affecting diabetes and everything so how, uh, what is your call in uh, milk and adulterated milk and how you deal with clients that how you make them understand through your stories because you are i loved your story how you make them simply understand so how you can make them understand in just a small story that would be interesting okay so i have to think of story now all right so first of all we all know that today the what milk is available in those packets what we get is adulterated it's full of steroids okay ek bichari gai pure desh ko kaise you know ya pure shehar ko ya pure mohalle ko kaise dud de sakti hai that is something you have to actually tell your patient okay but is it possible so they say no not possible so then they say what do they then how do they give it then they you have to ask them so they'll say okay so yeah so we they put steroids and they make it look so aapko steroids do diabetes ke liye so they'll say nahi nahi steroid nahi khana because everyone knows steroid nahi khana hai unko But आप तो रोज दूध में खाते हो ना स्टेरॉइड खाली चाय में ले लू क्या चाय में सिर्फ दो चम्मच सिर्फ दो चम्मच देर से सो देन यूल से अच्छा अभी के लिए ले लो ओके वी वी ग्रेजुअली बिकॉज इफ यू बिकम वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट इन दिग्निंग दिल रन अवे सो यू लेट अलाउ देम दैट टू स्पोन इन दुग इन द चाय slowly slowly you will have to make them change that as well and teach them alternate sources of milk okay and you have to give them recipes and you have to convince them that how they can have it okay and make it easy for them don't make it difficult for them nobody wants to sit in the kitchen whole day right neither their wives want to sit in the kitchen so all that you have to do to make your but it has to be a slow process if you try to hurry it up it will be a boomerang so change has to be so subtle and slow that the person who is undergoing change doesn't even realize they are changing that is the secret wonderful yes agreed uh sir of did uh, you got your story i should say have you got your story yes she has got the story Uh, we'll move to the next question uh, again by Vasundra. Is sugar intake completely eradicated in diabetes, or small quantities can be given to the patient if the patient is on medicines? If the patient is on medicine, okay. So now, when we talk about sugar, if you mean white refined sugar, then it's a big no-no, okay. But if you mean sugar in the form of a uh, raw jaggery or say honey. so again little bit is allowed again again when i say allowed please don't jump at my throat and say oh you said allowed it depends what when you are taking if you're going to take sugar immediately after a meal is going to spike up your blood sugars so because you already have enough of sugar in your body with your food food has released that glucose so you need to know when to eat what okay it's not just what when is also a very important point so yes you can eat healthy sugars provided you know when to eat them how much to eat them and again depending on your history on your sugar levels on your medication so there's no one size which fits all vasundara ji i hope you got your answer yes she has Thank so you. any more questions from the audience one last question if i can ask you yes uh, yes if a patient uh, would uh, enjoys having good jaggery sorry i i missed your question a patient who enjoys patient enjoys having little jaggery after food how safe is that okay so little should be very little number one again which kind of jaggery not those refined white colored wala third is how is the meal if they if you know that they are going to have jaggery all the time every meal or whichever meal then the meal which you have designed for them has to be able to accommodate that kind of sugar so you have to design the meal accordingly thank you food and discipline that's come hand in hand so do we have any more questions from the audience yes we have from zainab Zainab is waiting for another story. Zainab, please. 
unmute yourself okay that's my last question so uh, you may be getting a lot of people you know with the pcos and pcod uh, who gradually develop into the diabetes clients and 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 usually i get a lot of those stories that from past 4 years or 5 years i have been into depression then i developed pcos or pcod then i developed diabetes so what is the link between diabetes and pcos because it's obviously pre diabetic but what is the biggest link uh, into a stress into pcos and into a diabetes so stress is the one number one because when we are in stress we are releasing so much of cortisol which is upsetting the, that's why i said in the beginning of the program we our systems are all interlinked okay so whenever there is stress i mean there is cortisol produce all the hormones go haywire and it, that when we talk about diabetes we're talking mainly about your body producing insulin or your body accepting insulin which is again a hormone in pcos also it is again a hormone related issue so everything is all about hormone okay your uh, so when you have stress your entire there is a hormonal imbalance and it has become very very common this pcos problem today in today's youth okay the young people and i think we really need to do something about it because it is not only as i said it is doesn't just stay pcos it becomes so many more things it makes it difficult for them to conceive it has lots of mood swings it uh, it creates um, uh, difficulty in relationships and marriages and all kinds of things so it you can see the how the whole effect it's like a dynamo effect you start with one thing and why does pcos pcos happen it's not just stress alone it is coupled with late nights watching television not able to sleep till wee hours of morning leading a bad lifestyle eating junk food always sitting in front of blue light it's a combination okay it results in pcos depression all happening together why depression again you know relationship issues or expecting too much out of life or succumbing to peer pressure somebody is going to uh, to us for a holiday i can't go somebody has this rich cool boyfriend i don't have you know somebody has this cool looking parents i don't have so all these kinds of things so that is why in yoga now i would like to quote yoga we talk when we talk about health we talk about all these aspects because everything has uh, affects your health your how you think how your attitude is what do you want out for uh, in your life for yourself and how easily you get carried away by these rosy pictures people paint on social media so there's a joke right they say that if people were half as good looking as they look on instagram they would be like something so we all know that whatever people look and feel it's it's, it's a myth it's a myth so if we can understand and convey this to teenagers out there i'm sure this depression this pcos and subsequently diabetes and all other issues will uh, really go down agreed we have a question from uh, masandra how to convince people to be serious about their rising blood sugar levels one second i i'm how to be convince you to be serious about the rising blood sugar levels ma'am isme to phd hi karni padegi okay how to convince people that is only our biggest challenge we know the way we know how to do it but how to make somebody else do it is the whole idea and there is i wish there was one formula i wish there was one way is just one thing is first is you should be equipped with the right knowledge to be able to answer the questions okay then only they will trust you okay because just bolne se kuch nahi hota okay we all know that hum bhi aise it's not only about them we also are there in other things right so i think uh, uh, don't even try doing it send them to an expert i can remember with this uh, i can go back to an endless arguments and discussion with my mother why not to have two gulab jamuns one is enough that's what i'm saying so i mean there was a, there was a one answer for this but yeah no so uh, my dear audience i'm really sorry we are running out of time now we cannot have any more questions but there is a good news uh, the good news is that we are doing a program with farzana a 21 days hand holding program for diabetic patients how to reduce diabetes and it is a 21 days hand holding program where there will be 12 live sessions this program will start on 7th november onwards so we know that what you will be doing during diwali we have to take care 
from 7th November onwards. So spread the word in your family, friends, and we'll be more than happy to create a community that help each other under the guidance of Farzan. So friends, uh, looking forward uh, that we together do a kind of holistic treatment with the guidance of Farzana and her team and help you a bit also to reduce diabetes. It will be an honor for us. So thank you so much. And thank you so much for attending this program. Thank you. Thank you, Shivani. So and thank you, Hello My Yoga. Thank you, all the audience, for this opportunity and the wonderful questions. And uh, uh, I'm so glad that you asked me all these questions. It's not only an eye opener for you guys, but for people who are uh, seeing this program. And uh, I hope to, you know, really do my bit in, uh, if not eradicating, at least making it a little lesser and putting diabetes into remission. And Vasundra, one more addition to your question. Uh, this YouTube, this uh, conversation with Fazana will be available on YouTube. So you can send it to anyone who argues that their sugar levels, whatever their sugar levels are, and you can convince them. Better. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is a good one, Shwani. Thank you. I'm going to use it myself. Abhi bar bar mat pucho le lo, sun lo. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are ending this session here. Thank you.